for me as well. He's an alumni of uh, Team FRC, Bumblebee. He's uh, now a mentor in Team Bumblebee. He's the head judge of FTC Israel. I think he's the, one of the best volunteers we have here in First Israel. And uh, whoever was in Romania last year has met him and maybe me as well. Um, we would like to prepare you for the competition. Um, I cannot see who is here with us and who was there with us last year, but uh, we would like to talk to you a bit about FIRST. So um, the main thing to know about FIRST is that FIRST is really not only about robots. FIRST is a lot about spirit, about being um, part of something that is values, something that is uh, gracious professionalism, something that is uh, very important uh, besides robots, and that's what we're here to talk to you about. Um, it is something that is a lot of fun, something that you will see, whoever wasn't at the first championships will really uh, learn something new. It's something um, that you, whenever you come to it, it's exciting. It's a robotic competition. A team in an FTC team has over 10 team members. Um, it's high school members. They are really challenged to design and to build a robot to program a robot and to operate a robot. And they have their challenge to actually work on together with a team. They might be against, playing against one another in another match. And it's a lot of fun because it's a lot of strategy and it's very exciting and it's quite amazing, I have to say. Yeah, then, do you have anything you want to say in the meantime as well? No, not all, no. Okay. So, um, what you learn in FIRST is that um, a mentor is not a teacher. A mentor is a guide. A mentor is a coach. A mentor works with a student but doesn't really do all the work for the student. The student really learns how to work by himself and with a team. The student is part of a team and um, the mentor actually develops the student to learn how to uh, develop himself and to work as part of the team. Uh, the mentor gives skills and develops STEM skills um, in the student, but the student get, develops himself as well and uh, gets to practice engineering principles. Um, one of the main things that a student also gets from FIRST and from the program itself is that he learns how to build a real notebook and to know how to keep track of what he has in an engineering notebook. Um, and that's a way that he realizes the value of the ha hard work he had to do throughout the season uh, to make his um, innovation really happen. What does that mean? That actually you have to build a robot and you have to do a lot of work in the community and you have to work a lot with your team and until you don't really write it down and you put everything in writing, at the end of the season you don't really know what you have really gone through. And only after writing it down in that notebook and uh, picturing, taking all the pictures and writing everything down, you only see what you have gone through. And that's what um, judges actually see at the end of the season. 
Um, one of the great things in FIRST, and one of the things that um, I think in Romania we noticed last year um, that people are missing is that sharing is caring. And uh, in a global world today, it is important to share ideas. Without sharing them, um, you cannot really grow because it's a give and take. Uh, without giving something, um, you won't get something back. And um, you cannot grow by yourself in a team also and also in between teams. So uh, that's what FIRST gives. So in order to actually win most of the best awards um, in the World Championship, teams really need to learn skills and a lot of skills uh, are given to these children. So they learn how to raise funds. They learn how to design and market their team brand. They do a lot of community outreach and teach all their community, what they have done, and how they need help in order to grow. And they learn how to be gracious professionals uh, between themselves and with other teams. They learn how to assist one another and how to teach one another in the team and how to teach other teams, um, even when they compete. Erden, Erden, hello, is anyone with me? Yes. Oh, ah, okay. now can you I, I, I was wondering if you want to say something in the meantime. Uh, no, a little a bit uh, later in the presentation. Okay, so let, just let me know when you want to say something. Okay. We have we have with us Rebecca from Iowa, first uh, U.S. representative, who will be with us in Romania. So, Rebecca, when she feels like she will intervene. Ah, okay. You, you Aviela, will also. See. Okay, I, I wasn't aware that Rebecca is with us on the line as well because I don't see who the participants are. Yes. So, hi, Rebecca. Yes. Okay, Hello, great. everybody. Um, I understand it's evening over in Romania and Israel. I wanted to wish you a happy morning because it's morning here in Iowa. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. Great, Rebecca. So um, let me tell you about what happens when the season starts with all the team members because it's important for you to know. What we actually tell the team members and the high school members is that the main thing to do is to read, to read the manuals and to read the guidelines and to learn the self-assessment sheets before they start the season because they should really dive up into working groups and they have a lot of work to be done and they have to plan the season, plan the strategy to design and build a program. And they really have a lot of work to do, to do in a short time. And they have, they usually don't really know that at the beginning of the season, especially when they're new. And in Romania, you have a lot of new teams, and they they really have to learn how to do that. When they're new and they're rookies, it's a lot of things that come upon their heads, and uh, they need a lot of time to learn it. And uh, they have to learn to help each other a lot at this stage. So. Some of the teams in Romania that are in their first, second or third year, uh, well, their second year, second year, they will have learned it. The first year ones, it's very difficult, and you'll, you know, you'll really have to ask them what they did and how they did it. And even at some stage, you know, they'll need to learn from one another, and even you'll have to tell them, you know, go to the other teams and learn them, learn from them, and tell other te teams to teach the other teams because they really don't know yet that they can learn from other teams. Um, last year they were very, very um, close and they didn't yet know that they can get help from others. Um, 
now I'll talk to you a little bit about the engineering notebook. Um, each team um, should have prepared an engineering notebook where they should have helped kept track of everything that they have done and uh, kept photographs or little you know notes of what they have done at every stage uh, with people working in their workshops and they have you know with the fun they have had uh, all the information they had between the teams and uh, what they have given what they've taken and um, last year we sort of tried to tell them that they should even tell us what they gave to other teams and uh, what other teams gave to them and that that is important as well because they like sort of start try to keep what other teams were good at as well. So um, we try to tell them as well when we were there in Romania this year and when we talked to teams that you know they're allowed to say that other teams are good as well um, and that it's gracious to you know say someone else is good at what they do too and that they were helped and assisted by others and that they should assist other teams. Um, so these things should be in the notebook as well. Um, other things that teams should do is, is outreach activities. And um, teams usually should take pictures and add those in the notebooks as well and show judges what they did and what the costs were. They, some teams, I mean, good teams in the States, in Israel, write proper business plans and they go out to meet meetings and sponsors and they show them how much the costs are of all the, you know, of all the robots and everything they added to them. And besides of what all the other activities they do, they all, they added them up into a real business plan. And uh, also how they will support the team in the future all the activities that we'll need to do in their future. Um, now, the main issue is to understand what the notebook requirements are. Um, you can read all of that in the manual, the judge's manual that you, you, know, you should be reading in the Schoology. That I, I believe that uh, you've got the code and everything and you've gone through it. But make sure that you, you know, teams should not submit more than two notebooks at a competition. The, the team number and the name must appear on top of the engineering notebook. Um, you know, notebooks that cannot be considered without this information. And um, they should have a summary page at the front cover of the engineering notebook. And the summary um, should be one page and include some kind of a narrative about the school, about the organization, and you know, they should somehow highlight uh, what they did in the season, even write some kind of look at these pages and that, those pages so that you, the judges know where to look at so that you know, you don't have to go over the entire notebook. Like in Israel, we had people giving us over 200, 300 pages, but they had to somehow tell us to look at which pages to look at because if not, we couldn't go through all of the hundreds of pages. And um, it's important to know where to look at for the judges as well. Um, so we had them to leave us the pages they liked us to consider. Um, now, usually the notebook is divided into different sections. So one, one section is about the design process of the robot. The other is about the team section. And the last part should be either, you know, something about the business plan, a strategic plan, or a sustainability plan. Um, it depends upon the awards they really want um, or expect to get. I, you know, the Romanian teams don't always know exactly uh, what they really want. Some of them initially didn't even know, want to bring a notebook, but I believe this year they'll be more ready for it. They're, 
they really do try to work by the book. And uh, can I say something, Abiela? Yeah. Well, we had uh, regional events um, in uh, Cluj, in Yash, Timisoara, and two of them in Bucharest, so five in total. And in each uh, regional event, we had a meeting with all the mentors. And we revised their engineering notebook. Even a judging session was not in the schedule. But we just pick up all the engineering notebooks in the stages that they were at that time. And we spoke to each mentor in private if he or she wanted to have a feedback. But we spoke to all mentors together about organizing their notebooks based on the gay manual regulation on uh, what you say here, having um, a brief presentation at the beginning of the notebook to think of uh, what uh, word they are planning to achieve or to target and to organize the notebook. So maybe this year you will be surprised and hope that will happen. So let's see. So I, I've seen few business plans in each region we've been. Wow. Uh, I've been, uh, me and a colleague of mine, Christake, who we were in charge with this coordination and discussion with mentors, we've seen a very detailed um, design or um, um, engineering section. So you will really be surprised and hope that uh, after each meeting they, I mean, they got their lesson and they understood what needs to be done. I have to tell you that the people we met in Cluj and asked us for help more about the engineering, they are very much into the engineering side of it. That I saw for sure. Mm -hmm. So I believe that they will be much better this year than they were last. And they were good last year as well, the ones from the area of Transylvania. I have to say they were perfect also last year. They were much better than I expected. So let's see if this year the others get better as well. I mean, but we have to, you know, tell them and teach them as much as possible to get better all the time. They're excellent. Uh, we're always talking about that here in Israel. So um, just, you know, we do expect that this year. Um, now, something new this year for the people that were judging last year, I don't know how many judges in this forum um, were judges last year, but something new this year is that there is a five-minute presentation, a five-minute interview, uh, where the people, where the kids are allowed to present for five minutes, uh, and only after those five minutes the judges are allowed to ask questions. Um, Abiela, and, can I add something? Yeah. Uh, every judge will get a, a, a paper with a sample questions uh, that they can uh, ask the teams. Those questions should be uh, supportive uh, with a simple uh, answers that the, uh, the teams will be able to, uh, to describe their uh, uh, journey in their uh, uh, season. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's very important. That's very good. Okay. Um, one of the important things that judges should look at and see and be able to note for themselves is that they should see excited team members. Uh, they should be. They should know that all members were involved and that they all know what first is all about. Sometimes one of the questions that children should be asked is that if they all know what first is, if they know what gracious professionalism is. Um, uh, who worked on the robots? Uh, who can explain what they did? Um, what activities they did in the community? And um, what they learned from the season, what they got from the season, how, how they changed from the season. Actually, how they enjoyed 
from what they did this season. I think this is one of the main issues that the judge should learn from what they see in the team. Um, and the main thing that we should do as judges and as judge advisors is that we should behave and display gracious professionalism with everyone and everything, and that we should act with integrity. We should enjoy and have fun. And we should show them always that what is important is that what they learn and what we all learn is more important than what we win and what they win. We should always respect one another. We should think about it as a friendly competition. And uh, we should all behave with courtesy and compassion. It's the main things that all of us and they should think about all the time. Um, because kids forget to bring the controller word control uh, content sheet all the time, we should remember to ask the team for a copy. Because if not, they cannot be awarded that controller word content sheet. That's another thing that I always found out here in Israel as well. They always forget for some reason. Um, I think about the award requirements. Yarden, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes. Uh, the Connect Award is about connecting the uh, uh, community, connecting uh, the team to the engineering section, uh, to the uh, science and technology. Uh, and the team uh, the teams should have a, a clear business and strategic plan. Uh, in their uh, 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 engineering notebook uh, that states their uh, steps uh, to achieve their goal. Uh, the Motivate Award is presented to a team uh, that, identify, that identifies their future goals and the, uh, the steps that uh, they've taken to reach their, those goals. Uh, the Motivate and the Connect Award are uh, part of the uh, uh, Team Attribute Awards. Uh, we have three Team Attribute Awards, the Connect Award, the Motivate Award, and the Inspire Award that we will uh, talk later. Uh, there is another... Uh, uh, can you move to the next slide? The other uh, section of award is the uh, MCI, Machine uh, Creativity and Innovate Awards. Uh, one of them is the Rockwell Collins Innovate Award. Uh, this award is uh, uh, given to a team that uh, uh, has an innovate solution in their design uh, and has to be uh, uh, presented in the uh, engineering notebook in the engineering section. The design award is, uh, uh, is given to a team that uh, includes a detailed robot design uh, ro drawings and uh, it must uh, demonstrate industrial design principles. Uh, uh, you will be surprised if you didn't judge last year but uh, you can see uh, a really good engineering uh, uh, engineering process in the teams that involves CADing, uh, computer aided design, uh, strategic thinking, uh, and uh, iterative uh, iterative sol uh, solution. Uh, can we move to the next slide? Okay. Uh, the control award is uh, an award that is given uh, to a team that uh, has an innovate control in their uh, robot programming. Uh, teams can uh, program in Java, uh, and uh, I think it 
it's called mini blocks or something like that. Uh, and, th and those awards are given to a team uh, about their uh, strategic uh, uh, solution in their autonomous mode, in their teleoperated mode, uh, and etc. The judges award is given to a team that uh, uh, the judges may encounter their uh, unique efforts, performance, or dynamic, uh, dynamic, uh, dynamics, uh, and want to give a recognition to this uh, team. But since we don't have uh, a lot of awards, uh, many teams can uh, go uh, without awards. And the judges should give uh, the, uh, the team that they think uh, uh, did not get a proper recognition uh, this uh, judges award. I have to say that uh, in FCC uh, we have uh, six uh, judge awards. That is the uh, uh, connect award, the motivate award, the innovate, the design, the control, and the, I think we forgot one, and the think award. And one other award is the judges award, and the uh, uh, the most pre the prestigious of all is the inspire award. The inspire award is given to uh, a team that. Uh, shine in all the other uh, uh, section of awards. Uh, they should uh, have <coughs> a detailed uh, engineering notebook with engineering section, business plan, uh, and the engineering notebook must be high quality, thoughtful, and uh, well organized. In the FTC competition, we will give a first place for every award, and second and third place for the uh, for all awards except of the uh, judges award. And that's all for me. So Anna. Yes, and Rebecca. I will ask Rebecca to add something because uh, she is having few information for us. I think uh, this slide presentation was excellent. Um, you all did a fantastic job, and it was a great description of the awards. One of the um, areas, or two of the awards that we have a lot of questions about, is the differences between the Connect and the Motivate Award. And one of the analogies that we like to use between the Connect and the Motivate Award is let's say a team is at a museum, and let's say they are working with younger students to um, promote First Tech Challenge, like have a booth, have a display. That would be a Motivate Award. Now, if they are at the same museum, but they are talking to the administrators of the museum, so somebody who is older than um, that team, and they are trying to connect um, uh, connect with the um, museum, like maybe to get some fundraising, maybe to host an event, connect with engineers, that would be the Connect Award. So Motivate, typically you work with students who are younger than the team. Connect is you work with the adults and engineers who are older than the team. Does that help clarify maybe any confusion that would be between the Connect and the Motivate Award? I think yes. Okay, great, 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 great. By the way, I think that one of the things that uh, there are a lot of videos, short videos, in the schoolo Schoology that explain the differences between some of the awards. And I think it would help uh, to yeah. look at them. They are great videos to watch. If, if everybody has time to watch them, I would encourage to do so. Uh, tell us a bit, Rebecca, about uh, um, interviews. Are the mentors uh, uh, 
uh, allowed to be part of the interview or not? And so my experience is in, re yeah. Yes. Can they speak or uh, they should be uh, silent? Great, great question. Yeah, my experience is with the interviews, and this is something that is encouraged um, throughout first, is the mentors and coaches can be present in the room. However, they cannot speak. What we have done here in Iowa, if there is a mentor or a coach or even a parent who wants to witness the interviews, they actually need to stand behind the team. So that way the team cannot make eye contact with any of their coaches and mentors. The other idea as well is you can simply ask the coaches and mentors not to come in. But I know a lot of coaches and mentors want to witness and hear what their team says. Um, as you know, we do not provide feedback um, to the teams. Judges do not provide feedback to the teams. One thing that is encouraged is the team goes through their judging interview process, and then they can do a self-reflection sheet. And that self-reflection sheet is available in the game manuals if they choose to do that. Um, no verbal, no written feedback is allowed from the judging panel to any team. Yes, and if someone from the judge committee has, uh, I don't know, a special relationship to one of the team he or she interviews, what should they do? If there is a conflict of interest, yes. that judge will need to excuse themselves during the deliberation process. So if um, you just, if you have a conflict of interest, please disclose that to the judge advisors prior to the event and say, I, I mentor or I coach this team, or maybe I'm a parent of a team member. And then we would really greatly appreciate for you to maybe recluse yourself um, from the deliberation process. We wanna make sure every team has the um, ability to be treated fairly. One of the other things that we really push hard here in the United States is if, it, if something is not heard or seen or witnessed at the event, then it should not be considered into the deliberation process. We want to avoid the, the fact of hearsay. So, so if a coach has, I'm sorry, if a judge has witnessed a team at an earlier event or maybe even last year's event and that team did something really well or that team did something not so well, then um, that data, that information from last year's event cannot be brought into the event next week. And I believe there is a, a page about that in the um, Schoology account for the judges. Any other tips and tricks from this judging volunteer position? I think you guys have a great crew. Mistakes? What would be the common mistakes a judge can make? So it's good for us to avoid doing them. Um, well, you know, one of the things that is important to know is the judging panel is never wrong, right? So um, as long as everybody has an equal voice at the deliberation and everybody has heard, um, then the judging process will go very well. So I, I think you guys have a great crew with, with your panel of judges. You have two excellent uh, judge advisors, head judges, and two very experienced judge advisors, and the event will go very smoothly. There is no right or wrong answer when it comes to the deliberation process. How long the judge panels uh, have time to, I mean, how, how much time do they have to look on the engineering notebook? So when should we collect them from the team? What we do here in Iowa is we actually collect the notebooks when the teams check in for the event. So if that's a possibility, um, that would be great. So that way um, in each of the judging panel rooms, we could have the notebooks there before the judges even get there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then five, um, so teams are sent a time with their judging interview start time. Um, prior to that, five minutes prior to each of the interviews, the judge panels should look at each notebook. The teams come in, they present, you ask questions, the team leaves, and then each judging panel has about five minutes to write comments about that team. 
and then you transition and you start looking at the notebook for the next team that come in. One of the things that we also recommend, we're going to be interviewing a lot of teams, and it's going to be a little confusing. Um, you know, t the first team that you interview, you might get confused with the last team that, you're, that you interview. You could simply ask the teams when you interview them if you could take a picture of them. So that way we would, uh, when we deliberate, you can be like, oh, you know, the team with the purple shirts or the team with the funky hats. Um, something to be able to reflect and look back on if that is allowed. Um, now when, when, uh, when the consent form is signed, they do allow pictures to be taken because this is a public event. Um, so that's something that, um, that the, co that the judges can do when they come in an interview is take a picture of their team with a robot. Uh, team members, uh, are they allowed to register or to record the interview? No, they're not allowed to record the interview. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen on YouTube some uh, video video files with interviews from different maybe simulations from before competitions and so on. Um, are these helpful for our judges to watch before they will really get into the real interview with kids? If that video is watched during the competition, whether it be during the judge interview or maybe it's broadcasted in the pits by a team, like if a team has a monitor and they show that video, then it can be considered. But once again, we're going to have to go back. If it's not witnessed, if it's not heard, if it's not talked about um, at the event, then it cannot be uh, used in deliberation. So if a team has something on a website, um, if they if they promote that during the interview or if they promote that in the pits, then it is allowed. But anything that um, we see of the team prior to arriving to the event, we cannot use that in consideration. Uh, I was asking actually about uh, some uh, interviews with judges and teams, which are posted on YouTube, and. These interviews, I don't know if they are real or just rehearsals. And the question right, right. is, should we help our judges watching with sending these links, video links, so to understand uh, how yeah. an interview will look like? If there not. is an interview video of a team not competing, then yes, you can. I would discourage sending any YouTube videos of teams who are going to be at the event okay. prior to the event. Yeah. Okay. I, I know that there are several um, videos from American teams that they have recorded their rehearsed judges interview, mm -hmm. and you can certainly share those as well, but um, any team competing at the Romanian event should not be sh shown. Like. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't have other questions. I think people can ask uh, questions in the chat uh, window, and then I can uh, I can tell which questions are here. So Absolutely. Please. So it's a question from uh, Patricia Purvu who is saying each judge will interview all teams or only some teams. How e equitable scoring will be ensured? Sorry, can you say that again? So the question is if each judge will interview all teams or only some teams? Only some teams. Each judge will interview about eight teams in their judging group, but he, he will see other teams in their uh, pit uh, and will interview the other teams. But in the end, the uh, uh, judges will have to discuss and uh, uh, and uh, to present the, the teams they uh, watched and uh, deliberate on uh, which team is better. Or 
even more, I can say that uh, there will be 12 judging rooms, and in each judging room will be minimum three people. In some of them, maybe will be four. If I will have luck, we'll have four people in all judging rooms. So you will not be alone. It will not be only one person who is doing the interview. It will be three of you or four of you there. And not connecting to another question, is it, uh, it was uh, regarding the, if the judges will receive a piece of paper with five topics to ask. And Yarden, yes, you said they will receive um, a short uh, inter short question list, yeah, right? Yes. So, because uh, they said uh, here in the question, Christiane is uh, saying uh, maybe based on this uh, short list of questions, they can compare two or more teams on different things. So how actually the teams they interviewed can be compared? Based on the question or based on the way they answer the questions and the other materials they present? It's based on the uh, requirements. If uh, uh, if a team doesn't meet the requirements of an award, they can't be nominated for an award. But, but if uh, two or three teams uh, 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 meet the requirements of the awards, now the judging is uh, subjective. Every uh, judge will have his opinion, his or her opinion, about the uh, team and uh, uh, if it was better than the other team. I, I would also like to add in, I think that was spot on too, when, you, when the judges are interviewing teams, towards the end of the interview, you can simply ask the team, which award do you feel like you qualify for? Like if they have put in a lot of dedication and attention to their notebook, they would indicate the think award. Or if they feel like they've done a lot of outreach, they would, you know, do the motivator or connect award. But I would really encourage uh, the judging panels to ask the teams, which award do you think you qualify for? There is another question from Leo Radu. How could we make sure that all jury judges would fairly and consistently assess things? What if there will be significant differences between one judge and another? This is a question. You have to understand that initially there is some kind of uh, the judges interview them uh, in the rooms, but afterwards they have to remember that other judges will come and see them um, as well. So um, at the end of the day, um, after the judges see them, they will also be seen by other judges. So it's not only the judges that are interview them that will see them. So what is actually is the they will be seen in, during this interview and later on some judges will go to the pitch and the, no, the interview is very uh, is their most important part because at that interview they are actually judged and uh, they get um, their first set of eyes, uh, look at them and uh, see them. But if they pass that first interview with the three or four judges in front of them. Um, at the second stage, the other judges will come and see their pit as well. Mm -hmm. 
or they will go in the field and see how they play, right? Of course. Uh, yes, that that will happen anyway. Okay, I have a question. It's not here, but it's on my list. What if a team will not have an, any engineering notebook? Could they enter the judge interview? They can enter to the judge interview, but they cannot win uh, awards that uh, that uh, the requirements are the uh, engineering notebook. Okay. So should they be scheduled for any judge interview if they have no engineering notebook? Yes, because it's part of the uh, experience of a team mm -hmm. uh, and their fun uh, and the and the judges uh, should hear this, uh, those team, uh, and it will be a, a learning experience for this team. Okay. Hopefully, maybe we will not have the situation this year. But who knows? In case one team will come with no engineering notebook then we'll have to know what to do. I I believe uh, that at the end of the day, there is always one team that does not come with one, somehow. I don't know. So they will be part of the interview as well? And uh, It's important for them to come to get interviewed in any case. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mai sunt întrebări? I think this is all by now. Aviela, Rebecca, and Yarden, if you okay. want to say something else or if I will receive questions from judges. Uh, Listen, we are here to answer anyone yes. whenever they need us. And, uh, you know, we will be happy to answer whoever needs us. And you can also give us our, the, anyone's our mail as well so they can talk to us directly as well. So. Okay, so the next uh, meeting with judges will be um, in Sala Polivalenta on uh, Thursday evening at 7.30 and uh, Rebecca will be there and we'll talk mostly more technical details, right Rebecca, on the schedule for yep. the next day? And yes. Absolutely. I look forward to meeting you all Thursday at 7 p.m. Okay. Okay. And we will meet everybody already at the competition, the team from Israel. Friday, Friday. morning. Yes. 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 I will share with everybody the schedule for uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, but mostly for Friday because it's the first day of the competition. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Aviela, Rebecca, and Yarden, and thank you to the other 24 participants. Thank, thank you all. We'll thank you all, video. and uh, we'll meet you all there in uh, Romania on Friday. Yes. We'll have this video posted on, um, on I don't know where, I will let you know on which site maybe on our website, so all all volunteers to have access to him, please. Excellent. Okay. Great, Thank Anna. You. So all the best and see you all there. We'll all have fun. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.